What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Tanya Lady T, and this is another edition of All Aboard. Let's get on this train. Well, y'all, I'm sitting here waiting on my car to warm up. Um, my Jeep is in the uh, at the dealership getting service, so uh, I'm riding my Lady T number two. Um, I wanted to come on this morning and uh, talk about, um, well, first of all, hey, everybody, I've been extremely busy, so I told y'all I'll be doing uh, limited videos, but I did want to get on this morning and just talk about uh, what was in the news as, as it relates to the church, uh, I think last week sometime, about Marvin Winans, uh, he had a, uh, a lady that had began to go to his ministry she was a, a unwed mother with a child out of wedlock, a two-year-old child. Um, I like to try to go and read or find out all the variables in a situation before I start running my mouth. But I began to read, uh, and, and it's out there. Um, and me and my friend, we talked about it, uh, being that he's a retired pastor. I just wanted to get his feeling and take on it. But anyway, I began to read and what basically, uh, based on what their uh, spokespeople at uh, Marvin Wines Church stated was that there was a young, you know, a lady, and, and, and also the lady went to the media because of she was really just upset about it. But anyway, the gist of it is, she 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 began to go to that uh, church for fellowship because she wanted to raise her son in a you know with morals and have a spiritual background, spiritual you know uh, father, pastor over her life. And so the church did an announcement amongst the congregation stating that. They were going to be uh, christening or baptizing, if you will, uh, two-year-old children. You know, they were going to do a special dedication service for that. So anybody who wanted their child to be baptized or christened, um, go ahead on and sign up and, and that type of thing. So she did that. She signed up. She did everything made the necessary steps. Again, I'm going to repeat, this was a church announcement that they made or offering it to anybody who wanted to bring their child. Uh, so she, again, did what was necessary. Well, in her communications with some of the leadership of the church as that she was giving out her information, she mentioned that, uh, well, I am a unwed mother and that, um, Immediately, she says, and this is according to the, you know, the news reports. Immediately, she said the communication just stopped and broke. The, the communication just broke down. And she was, you know, very hurt and upset that she began to be get, get shunned. So, I don't know. You know, it didn't say in the article whether or not they had a talk with the Bishop Marvin Winans or whatnot. But... The conclusion of it was was that they were not going to be able to dedicate her baby during that service in front of the congregation that other arrangements need to be made and Pastor Wine has had a rule or a you know he had a rule that he does not do that but they will make other arrangements for her, her son to be a Christian but one of the deacons of the church or i.e. leadership of the church would uh, baptize his child or Christian the child and uh, she felt a certain type of way about it she felt like you know why can't her child be you know dedicated in front of the congregation just like any other child and um, so that was her point of going to the media and you know of course it left a nasty taste in her mouth and she stated that you know the church reached out to her and said well we didn't say that we weren't going to dedicate your baby we just said that you, we're not going to do it in front of the uh, congregation so just continually putting salt in a wound 
you know, you've already wounded someone and then you're going to try to come back and then re-explain your position to add more insult to injury. So anyway, here is where Tanya Powell stands on that whole situation. And I'm being very serious. And I don't mind if we all have a dialogue, any of you pastors or evangelists or, you know, apostles that listen to my channel. Uh, I, I like to get your feedback, if you will. Uh, or you may want to remain silent on this issue. Now, I, I can just say this. That situation concerning that issue with this single mother with a child out of wedlock, um, I feel a certain type of way because I'm a single parent. Um, so that, it kind of made me a little tight that they treated her in such a manner. Because when I gave my life to Christ, I can't imagine anyone shunning me or my child from getting baptized, Christian, or whatever you want to call it, at whatever age. I, I can't imagine if had I been shunned because now that I have read the scriptures and I know the word of God, that type of stuff was settled years ago. That that kind of stuff, that type of me church mentality, religious mentality, Jesus settled that years ago on the cross. So who are we? And I'm talking about the body of Christ now. So who are we to tell somebody, no, we're not going to do that? Who are we? If we're supposed to be ambassadors and disciples of Jesus Christ, who are we to tell people that they cannot publicly offer up themselves and or their children? And you know, you had some people from his church said, well, you know, uh, she didn't lay that, she didn't, the congregation went with her when she laid down and had that child. Now, come on now, are we, go, are we gonna do this, y'all? Are we gonna really do this? Come on, church. Please, please. We, we got to do better than that. We we all were born into sin and shaped in iniquity. We all were in darkness. And the way I feel about this whole situation, and like I said, I, I'm a little tired about it. Because last I checked, too, Tanya, you have a past. Last I checked, Marvin Wallace, you have a past. And I'm not trying to throw salt and throw insult to injury, but your own child, Marvin Winans. Uh, was caught up in a Ponzi scheme and uh, you didn't shun him and reject him. So I, I, it bothers me that we as a church still here in 2013 because of your religious feelings makes the word of God of none effect. The word tells us suffer the little children and not come unto me. And you know, people will say, well, you know, it, it, it's about the baby getting back. Now, why do you need an audience? Okay, then why, why did they announce that the other children? Why, why even do an announcement? Why even do a dedication for in front of the congregation for all to see? If that's the case, you see what I'm saying? You're trying to be a respecter of persons. You don't have a heaven or hell to put anybody in. We are supposed to, in my opinion, supposed to love people through things while we can still honor the father and that's my thing and i understand that if you're a type of person if you say okay look i have a rule i'm not going to do this because i don't want it to be uh call upheaval i get that i might not agree with it but i get i get it some people just have certain rules about themselves so that they don't get jacked for instance for me I have a rule that I don't, I don't, I don't lend money. I'll give you money if you're in a tight fix and I've got it. I'll lend it to you because I don't want it to be uncomfortable if we're around each other and we decide to go shopping and you out buying purses, hats, and this and that. And I know you owe me fifty dollars. No, I'm not gonna put that in my life. I'm not gonna have that type of frustration in my life. So guess what? If I got it, I'm gonna just lend it to you and say, look, let this be a blessing to you. But I'm telling you the truth, y'all. This thing really bothered me because the way I feel like this kind of stuff could have been squashed is just like Jesus. When they brought that woman to uh, him and they said she was caught in the very act of adultery. 
the very act. So that lets you know she probably was brought to him and she was butt naked. Still moist between the legs. I guarantee, I guarantee you that was the state of that woman. But no, what did Jesus say? He who was without sin cast the first stone. So you heard, and so when they dropped all the stones, Jesus said, okay, where are your accusers? This had, to me, this has absolutely nothing to do with church rules, church hierarchy. This has, this is simply, how do you, how do we as a church offer something different to people who from outside looking in? If we do them like the world do them, we're of the world. We're just supposed to be in the world, not of it. So you're offering the very same thing that the world would offer. And it really left a nasty taste in my mouth when I was listening, or not necessarily listening, but reading what some of the, 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 uh, the members of that church had to say about this woman. Oh, they read her upside down one the other. You didn't need you didn't you didn't need the congregation when you laid down and had that baby out of the way. I mean, you know, I'm thinking, okay, we go we gonna do this, y'all. We're gonna do that. And we're supposed to be the household of faith. And and let me tell you something. The same people, we all are guilty of it. We'll sit up there and and and, and, and dog a person out and we 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 turn right around, fornicate, drink, smoke, commit adultery. We do it all. And then we're going to do that. We're going to put that out on record. Here it is that we have an opportunity to get. This could have been such a beautiful teachable moment. Oh, my God. I think about my God. What a beautiful teachable moment where Pastor Winans and his staff could have been able to say, we're going to love her through this. Guess what, congregation? We can look at her and we can say, oh, she's got a child out of wedlock. But guess what? Let's expose your past sins. Expose your tra past transgressions. Sin is sin. But Jesus took care of that years ago. Years ago. And here it is. Who are we to tell righteous indignation? Who are we to tell somebody we can't? What? What is your calling? It's no different than whenever I was praying it was pressed upon my heart. Kiana had asked us to pray for her. And I did a video praying for her. And somebody going to come in the prayer room. Oh, I don't think you need to pray for her. Because I think she's just trying to gain sympathy. What? Wait a minute. First of all, I'm doing what my father in heaven told me to do. I don't care what her agenda may have been. Or your agenda. I'm doing what thus saith the Lord. It, that vex, Stuff like that vexes my spirit. That we are in the household of faith. Or we claim that we're in the household of faith. And we're trying to analyze every angle. Okay, so what are we going to be start doing now? If people come to a tent revival, and you see, and, and you, and that person is a known prostitute, that person in in the community, they're a known prostitute, they're a known drug dealer, they're a known drug addict, and they run up up in there and say, "What must I do to be saved?" You know, the word still says, "Come to me as you are." It didn't say come to me the way church folk and religious folk think that you should come. Who are we to tell people that we can't do this and do that? That ain't what Jesus taught. Biblically, he was wrong. B Biblically, he was wrong. I'm going to stand flat for this and he was wrong. Because if we are supposed to receive in people or pray them through things, love them through things, and honoring the Father. We can do that. There's a lot of things we don't condone or we don't like people to do. We condemn the sin, but we still love the person. That could have been a beautiful moment for him to teach that woman on how to be a good parent. So we're going to penalize the child now? My God, that could have been a beautiful teachable moment for the whole congregation. But what do we do? We have all these, it, ooh, and I understand there's got to be balance. You can't have people in there out of And here it is, people come to church to get the help that they need, and we sit up here and we hurt them even the more. And so now the woman's got a nasty taste in her mouth. She point blank said, 
I won't never step my foot back in that door. Again, giving people another reason not to come to church. And of course, we're not responsible for people's behavior. We're not responsible for people and how, you know, they have to take an account for everything that they do. We all have to stand before the judgment seat to do that. But what are we offering these people different than what the world offers them? We're responding to these type of people the same way the world will respond to them. But again, I, I, I believe that we as the body of Christ, we can come together and love people through stuff as well as honor the Father. And Jesus would have never turned that woman away. If people come straight off the street with needles in their arms and just let, got up, laid up, from a prostitute, same way that that woman did when she was brought before Jesus, caught in the very act of adultery. If somebody comes in and in, in revival, we're going to say, oh, well, wait a minute now. We got to find out first. Are you married? Are you single? Are you divorced? Are you this? Are you that? This woman wasn't looking for a leadership position in the church. We understand that it talks about uh, uh, how a certain people need to look. Or not necessarily look. We, we understand that certain people have to have attributes to be leadership of the church. We understand that. You got to study to show yourself approved. You can't just be come off the street and all of a sudden you the head armor bearer. No, 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 no. We understand that this woman won't look for a position in the church. She was simply coming there to fellowship, to establish a church home, to, to raise her son up with morals and values. And she got shot. That was the worst example. And people said, oh, well, she, she was still going to get, they were still going to baptize the child, but they just. And they said, you know, they were still going to baptize the child, but uh, they just weren't going to do it in front of congregation. Again, adding insult to injury. But anyway, I, I'm getting a little emotional, but, you know, this really upset me. This really, really upset me because I thought, you know, what, what, what are we doing? You know, I did a video about what are we doing? People are hurting. We're, we're not. I'm sorry. And, you know, and I ain't saying all ministry. Y'all understand what I'm saying. But I'm sorry. We're not meeting people at their need. We're, we're just on. And so, and this was, to me, this was a horrible example. Oh, my God. I think about how awesome an example we as a church could have set. What Pastor Marvin Wines, what kind of example he could have set. Because you know what, pastors and us as a body of Christ, what are we going to do when we're approached by that prostitute? What are we going to do? You know, what are we going to do when we're approached by all these different people and we don't know how to love them through stuff yet honor the father? I mean, we really need to check ourselves on that. And that's all I want to do is have a conversation. What? do we do as a body of Christ that offers something different? Sorry about that, y'all. My video kept cutting off. I had to get some space on my car, uh, on my uh, phone. But no, all I wanted to say, what are we going to do as a church to offer something different? If we're supposed to be the hospital, if we're supposed to be the IV, uh, you know, the nutrition for people who come off the street, or people who are looking for church homes. If we're supposed to be all of this, how, what do we offer? Forget all that, you know, Jesus spoke about this. He was, he was very, very, I mean, you, you, you follow the text, you read the word. Jesus was very critical of religious leaders who had that type of mindset. He said it straight up. That's what I love about Jesus. He didn't make no bones about it. He didn't try to, you know, shook up. He said, look, your tradition is making the word of God of none effect. And that's all that is. That's a tradition. I truly believe that Pastor Wines has put into place that has nothing to do with the movement of Jesus Christ. Has nothing to do. It's about adding to the church daily it's about adding to the kingdom you got to be kingdom mindset so we're going we're going to start doing an application when people come in off the street oh well you know we got to find out all this and that and the other from them first before we can guide them to all truth through the lord jesus christ my god god forbid 
So anyway, that's all I wanted to come on, come on and talk about. You know, church, we got to do better. This is really a this was a, an indictment, in my opinion, on the church in 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 the worst fashion. It just really is. So anyway, let me know what you think. May God bless you. And may the peace of the Lord be with you. Church, we got to do better than this.